I remember I was with this girl and um, she smoked weed and I was hanging out with her and stuff. She didn't go to my school. She went to a different school, but I don't even know where I met her. But um, so I would go to her house and stuff and they smoked weed. And she would always, every time I would go over there, she'd be like, want to hit the blunt? And I'm like, no, I don't want my mom to find out. I don't want to go home smelling like weed. I don't. So I just, I've always had really bad anxiety. So I was just, no, no, no. But it was one night, my mom was like, yeah, you can spend the night. And just ahead of this, I don't blame my mom for any of this. I feel like I was conscious of all my decisions. So just want to let y'all know that. But um, so I go to her house and... I, I, I knew I was spending the night. I had my little backpack ready and all that good stuff. And she was she asked me again. She was like, do you want to hit the blunt? And I was like, okay. My mom's not going to – I'm not going to be high tomorrow, right? Like, I'm only going to be high tonight, right? And she was like, yeah, like, when you go to sleep, it'll be gone. So I was like, okay. So I hit the blunt. I swear I was one with the couch. Me and the couch were the same person at that moment. I just – and I knew right then and there – I was able to change how I felt. I didn't feel sad. I didn't feel insecure. I didn't feel, I felt like I was on top of the world. So I just remember next morning, I was like, can we smoke? Can we smoke? Like I was, it was bad. And she was like, you need to chill. And from that and on, like I always smoke weed and my mom didn't like it. My dad did not like that. Like I was raised as a Jehovah's witness. So it just, it kind of caused a little bit of problems because I was trying to sneak and, I used to go through some things just to hit the blunt about three times. Then I get caught and get it confiscated every time and get it thrown away. And I just keep trying and keep trying and keep trying. And then I got to ninth grade and I remember being bored one day and I was going through the medicine cabinet because I knew Benadryl makes you sleepy. So I'm like, okay, what else makes me sleepy? Because I like that sleepy feeling. Because high, when I'm high, I feel sleepy. So I'm just over here connecting all the dots, trying to see what I can get. And um, I remember I found, I don't even know, it was like a low-dosage Xanax or something. And I remember I took it right before I went to school, and I felt like I was floating. I felt like I was invincible. And I was in class looking stupid over there like this. And my teacher's like, are you okay? And my friend was taking notes for me because I couldn't stay awake. And I just remember, it wasn't, I think it was only like two left in the bottle. So I was like, okay, I can't take another one because my mom's going to know I was in here. So that was that. And um, as I got, you know, in ninth grade, I always was smoking weed. I was always high, but I was also still getting bullied. So I was like, okay, I know when I'm high, I don't feel this hurt that people are making me feel. And side note, I'm backtrack real, a little bit. When I was in eighth grade, I remember getting high that weekend and coming to school on Monday. I had two friends, but they were barely my friends, but I had two. And I came to school, I was like, y'all, I smoked weed. They're like, what? You did what? And I was like, oh. I thought I was going to get a way different response. So then I was like, oh, my gosh, okay, um, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, and I wasn't kidding. So, yeah, back to ninth grade. So it was just – I was on the cheer team. It was cool. Um, I think I had, like, one or two friends. Um and I just remember, like, I barely remember ninth grade because I was just, I just wanted to be high. And I ended up switching schools, and I was at North Gwinnett High School, and then I ended up going to Lanier High School. And um, I liked this boy who was on the basketball team, and he was, like, popular. Like, all the girls were cool with him, all the guys were cool with him. And he liked me. And I'm like, okay, cool. We're going to the same school now. Like, it's lit. And I'm thinking it's going to be cool because everybody like him. So if I'm his girl, everybody going to like me. Eh, wrong. No. I get up in there and they're like, oh, so you you with Robert? And, da, 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 da. and I'm like, yes. Like, I was scared. I didn't I didn't know what was going on. I didn't, I didn't know what I was walking into because I guess he was already telling people about me before I even got up in there. So um, it just sucked. And I just was like, you know what? I'm going to do what I did last year. I'm going to come to school high because I don't have to deal with no, I'm not going to care how you think about me. Like, I'm good. Put my headphones in. I'm in a whole other world. So, and I kind of made a little name for myself. Like, everybody knew Lauren's going to come to school probably a little bit late, high, and smelling like gas. 
and music blasting. And I was a class clown. I was always playing around and stuff because, once again, I just wanted to be accepted. I wanted to be liked. And I knew that I'm funny. I can make people laugh. And even if they don't want to be my friend, they can still be like, that girl's funny. That girl's this. Not something bad. So, um, yeah. Tenth grade was cool. I ended up getting kicked out <laughs> of, ten of that school because I was already on a permissive transfer, which is when you get permission to go to a school out of district. And um, I, was, I had referrals on referrals on referrals. Like, I was bad. I always... I've never been good with authority. So the teacher would be like, Lauren, you need to stop talking. I'm like, everybody else talking, though. Why are you picking on me? And then she's like, I'm not picking on you. I'm like, you are. Like, I, I was, if you gave me a little bit of, if you gave me an inch, I'm taking a round trip, not a mile. So I was always arguing with my teachers. Um, and so I already had referrals. So when I got in trouble, it was because they found weed in my bag, which I didn't know I had. But then my friend was like, hey, let's go smoke it in the garden. And I was like, that's a terrible idea. Let's do it. So we go and we do it. And I just remember hearing, like, keys. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like, I'm about to get in trouble. Like, I'm having a panic attack. And I had an idea. I was like, okay, I got to pee. So took my pants off, squat on the ground, started peeing. And as the assistant principal is coming up, I'm like, no, go away. I'm peeing. Go away. So he actually turns around and goes like this. So I'm saying to the girl who's with me, I'm like, Throw it, get rid of it. And she's like, huh? And I'm like, throw it. And then the guy was like, you can't be still peeing. And I'm like, no, 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 I'm done. So he comes up. The whole little weed setup is right there in the middle. And he's like, yeah, you're getting kicked out. You're, you're done. You're not being at this school anymore. Like, he literally said that to me. And I was like, wow, the nerve. So I got kicked up out of there. Then I went to alternative school. Um, it was the bad kid school. And um, that was a breeze. Like, uh, easiest schoolwork in the world, honestly. So finished that. Then 11th grade, I went to another school because I couldn't go back there, and I didn't want to go to the school that I was district for because they was rude mm -hmm. to me there. So I'm at this school, and then it's called Meadow Creek, and I didn't understand why people were calling it Ghetto Creek, but I knew that I had some friends there. I want to go be with my friends. So I went there, and <laughs> I will never forget the bathrooms were a magical place if you like to get high. So I go into the bathroom. I remember I was there. I got my school stuff all together. I'm like, this this place ain't that bad. They had the best. They had like a food truck, Chick-fil-A. Wow. A, 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 I can't remember. Like the culinary classes, they cook for lunch. So they had all these different options. I'm like, I'm living. This is nice. I remember going in the bathroom when I was in math class. And I failed my ninth grade math class because... I was always high in ninth grade, so. So Lauren. Yes, ma'am. Is that when everything escalated was at that point? Mm-hmm, it was 11th grade, and I just remember I had had my first perk in 11th grade, I had my first Xanax in 11th grade, that's when I started dabbling in that stuff. And I just, someone was offering me a perk, and I liked perks, so I was like, I'm gonna keep taking perks. And it wasn't until, I wanna say, maybe last year, Someone offered me a Perk 30. Now, they discontinued Perk 30s about four years ago. What you see now that's a Perk 30 is press fentanyl. It's not a Perk. Perks, it's, it's not that. And it was, like, it was socially acceptable when it first came out because there was a song like, Perk 30, I just bought a Perk 30, all that. So people think it's cool. And then there was posts going up like, don't take those. It's fentanyl in them. And, da -da -da -da. and overdoses started happening and all this, that, and the third. But by the time I found out what was in it, it was too late. Like, I'm asking the plugs, I'm like, hey, can you serve me? They're like, you know these are fake. I'm like, are you coming or not? Do you want my money or not? I didn't care about that. So um, I didn't know that I was addicted until I withdrawed for the first time in my life, and it was it was scary. Like, my body was hurting. I, could, I felt like I couldn't breathe. Like, if any of you have ever watched Euphoria, and if you've seen the scene with Rue withdrawing, it's exactly like that. So um, it was just really scary, and that's when my mom found out because I stumbled down the stairs, and I was like, Ma, I got to tell you something. And she's like, what? I'm like, I'm withdrawing. She's like, from what? And I'm like, perks. And she's like, what? So, she, you know, she helped me get back to health and stuff, but I ended up being sneaky, and I had the plug pull up on me and g gave me perks. And she's like, how are you, like, okay? And I'm like, mm, I'm fine, though. So 
my mom's not stupid, so she's like, mm. so basically, it just it just kept going down. Like it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. Like, and I tried multiple things: shrooms, LSD, hydros, oxys, all that. I had already tried that, but when I tried this, I was like, I like this. I want this. I don't want that stuff. So it was just it was a scary time because everyone around me is taking a perk. You want a perk? Want a perk? Perk set? And I'm like, so, yeah. So yeah. now, so now, at what point did you? Was that the the point that you say, okay, I now need to get help? Um, I had my mom had found my stuff and she flushed it down the toilet and told me, and I had a really bad episode, like. And that's the thing about addiction. You're not yourself anymore. You turn into a completely different person. You don't care about the same interests you had. Like, mm -hmm. all you care about is that. And your brain is telling you, I want more and more and more and more and more. And there is people in this world who could possibly pick up a drug, take it, put it down, and never do it again. But unfortunately, I suffer from the disease of addiction where I can't pick something up and put it down. Like, I just can't. So when I found out that that happened, I like, tore up her room, messed up everything. I broke a lamp that's been around longer than I've been alive. Like, it was just a whole bunch of stuff. And after I smoked a little blunt and I looked around me and I was like, oh my God, I have a problem. So I asked my mom, I was like, can we look for rehabs and stuff? And she was like, yeah. And I went to a rehab and I ended up leaving early because things weren't going my way and I'm a brat. I went to a sober living, got Mm -hmm. Mess. I I got totally focused in a boy more than my own sobriety. So now let me ask you this. So can you share with the with the um, the students that are here and what peer pressure looks like today? Mm -hmm. So peer pressure, honestly, it's it can be something as simple as just, hey girl, um, do you want to go get drunk tonight? And you can be like, ah, I don't really feel like it. And they'd be like, girl, you lame. Come on, you always in the house. Come on, just just come outside. Pop out, stuff like that. It's it's not like back in the day, I know it used to be like, come on, just do it, just do it. Come on, come on, come on, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Like it was very repetitive, but now I feel like it's just like, someone could post a poll on Instagram and it's like, what's the move tonight or something and you might not swipe up and they can DM you and be like, you never pop out, like, what's up, let's do something. And you're like, nah, I don't really feel like it. And they're like, come on, like, let, let's just have fun. It's just one night and this, something like that. And um, it's sad because we don't really notice it. We just look at it like, okay, we're just having fun. And sometimes it really is just that simple as having fun, but you don't even notice it. And peer pressure can also be played off as a, you seeing everyone else doing something and because you don't do that, they acting weird towards you. That is peer pressure, because you're going to feel like, well, what's wrong with me? It can either be taken as like, okay, I don't care, or okay, well, let me just try it, because everybody else doing it. Like, it's very enabled now. Like, you don't notice it, because everyone else is doing these things. So um, I think if you keep an eye on those type of things, like, just try to be aware, because it's just going to get worse and worse and more less noticeable as we as time goes on but um and another thing for the moms in here if anyone you know as kids or whatever it's as an addict i knew how to hide my addiction recovering addict excuse me but i knew how to hide my addiction especially because i knew my mom knows me like the back of her hand so i'm guessing that y'all know y'all kids like the back of your hand so it was real easy for me to hide it until it wasn't. And I feel like the things you should notice, if your child is pretty open with you and they start randomly getting closed in, they're doing something they don't got no business doing. I'm sorry to my girlies in here if I'm giving up the tea. I'm so sorry, but I'm trying to save y'all lives up in here. <laughs> but um, yeah, like it starts off with, you know, the distance, random, like, resentment kind of like you knock on their door oh mom leave me alone why you keep coming to my room stuff like that like me personally I can't speak for everyone else on how it would look on everyone else but me personally I feel like it was noticeable when I just never came out my room anymore I was always in my room and the type of person I am I got ADHD 
I have to move. I can't sit in the same spot and do the same thing all day long. I need to run down the stairs. I need to walk around, open the fridge four times, like something else is going to pop up in there, like just doing stuff like that. And um, I stopped, stopped eating as much as I did. And my mama can cook. She cooks a full course meal every night. And I stopped eating. Um, I didn't really go out with my friends as much as I did. I stopped keeping up with my appearance. Like, my nails was never done, my lashes was busted, hair busted, lace lifting. It was just terrible. So it's just little things like that. But it, once again, it's different for everybody. Um, but if you have, and this is for everyone in here, if you have any family members who deal with alcoholism, deal with addiction, or whatever, there is something for y'all to go to, too, because... Um, you know, you know people who have deal with addiction, they go to AA, like Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics Anonymous. There's stuff for people who have family members who have to deal with people, like s r relatives that deal with addiction, and it's called Al-Anon. And that's for people, say if I have a family member who's an alcoholic, I can go to Al-Anon. Because it's not easy being related to somebody or care having a friend Somebody you care about that's living a life like that because you're watching them destroy themselves. You're literally watching them kill themselves. So, and it's hard, and you don't even, therapists might not even know what to tell you. So, you can go somewhere where there's people who's dealing with the same exact thing you're dealing with, and y'all can talk about it and figure out, you know, how to deal with it. And then there's Narnon, which I think sounds so weird, but it's Narcotics Anonymous, non, whatever that means. And it's just the same thing as Al Anon, but for if you have a relative or a loved one or somebody you care about that is addicted to drugs. Um, cause like I said, it's not easy l caring about somebody who does not care about themselves because they're literally destroying themselves by choice, not by choice, but by choice. Cause we can't really stop. If we wanted to stop, there'd be no addicts, but, um, it's very hard, but it's definitely possible to get through. I'm 32 days sober today. I w wish I could have said four months, but. Excellent. <laughs> So if you ever have anybody dealing with this, um, it's not always easy to go straight to them and be like, I know you're doing this or this, that, and the third. But the opposite of addiction is not sobriety, it's connection. Half the time someone's dealing with alcoholism or addiction, it is because there is a disconnect. They don't feel welcomed, they don't feel loved, they don't feel like they fit, they don't feel accepted. It's somewhere in there that Cause that trigger that turned that light on in their brain. Like, you know, I'm gonna go to do this. I'm gonna go do this because it changes how I feel. I won't have to feel this. So I advise if anybody, you know, you have a friend, a spouse, a loved one, a sibling, relative, whatever, mm -hmm. if they're dealing with addiction, do not give up on them because I promise you that's not gonna, scare tactics don't work with addicts. I, d I did fentanyl, so you think, I'm not scared, I'm clearly not scared of nothing. <laughs> That's the most deadliest drug out right now. So it's just, if you keep being there for them, but don't let them take advantage of you, because we can be very sneaky and vindictive. I know this. But love from a distance, but don't not love at all. Because that connection, if they see that you're trying and you care, and they know that they're hurting you and hurting you, but you're still there, they're going to be like, dang, like, I can't keep hurting you. Like, when I had my family session in rehab, I see my mom cry, and I haven't seen her cry like that in a long time. And it just, I already wanted to stay sober, but when I seen that, I was like, oh. But like I got shot. I was like, no, I can't keep doing this to her. I can't, I refuse. Wow. And it really did help. So just try to be there for that person. If you are young and you have friends who's doing perks, getting drunk every night, every time y'all go somewhere, they gotta have a bottle or like whatever it is, keep your distance because you are who you hang around. If you're not, then you will be eventually. So, I mean, honestly, there's, there's really not much more I can say, but just watch who you hang around. Because in my Bible, it says bad association spoils useful habits. So Absolutely. just keep that in mind. But I appreciate y'all listening to my chatterbox self. And um, if y'all want to hear more and learn more about all this crazy stuff, follow my Instagram, Lauren Dior, and I'm... Follow me, DM me, I will respond to you, and I'll, you know, interact. Because I just want to help everybody. So thank you for listening. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that um, amazing, amazing Lauren 
And uh, no, baby, you can come just sit right here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but thank you so much for sharing, and definitely your story was inspiring, and prayfully you are going to help many others. So thank you so much, love.